Welcome to On Texas Football. I'm Bobby Burton, joined by Rod Babers, former Longhorn. Uh, Rod, doing okay today. We're about five days away now from uh, the National College Football Playoff matchup with the University of Washington. This is the state of the program, our weekly uh, segment, uh, talking about all things Texas. Uh, this is sp- brought to you by Adam Lowy and the Lowy Law Firm. Uh, I want to start, Rod, and just put it put it this way to you. You've been at bowl practices before. You know what they they look like. You know how they feel. Um, what what are the Longhorns? They took off for for um, New Orleans today. What's that like as a team? Like what what's the thought behind the scenes right now? Uh, you know, it's interesting. I actually um, heard an interview with Chris Peterson, uh, the former head coach for the Huskies, talking about this, and um, he talked about how it is for a coach. It's um, it's a bit of a balancing act because you got so much time off. Right. So you don't want to lose your edge. So you do want to push the guys a little bit. But your biggest issue is getting guys healthy. And you do have this period now to get everybody healthy, to be the healthiest team you've ever been. Um, in order to do that, though, you don't you know, you want to make sure that you safeguard against injuries in practice. You don't want to push guys into the season. And you talked about how, you know, it's really uh, tough for coaches to determine are they going to push guys in practice, try to replicate some of the physicality they're going to see. Or are they going to try to dial it back a little bit? Uh, it's really interesting. Uh, and I, I think about that, and I think it's going to affect a lot of things in this game. I think it will affect tackling in this game. Just certain things that usually will pop up at the beginning of the year because this game will feel like that in a lot of respects because I don't know if these teams are going to have really physical practice to try to replicate that. I think they're going to have more relaxed practices, at least for the starters and the front-line guys. When I was playing as a young guy, I remember getting a lot of reps in these bowl practices, I almost feel like a spring. Uh, again, we talk about that with the extra bowl practices. If that's for the young guys, and you can still get the physicality and the edge, the younger guys will do it. But I think for those, the guys that you expect to play a lot of reps in these bowl games, especially important ones like this, uh, you know, they're dialed back. I really do think that most of the coaches, and Chris Peterson actually confirmed it. He's like, I was scared. He said, I was straight up scared of guys getting hurt in practices with that much time. All right, to practice, and if I got a little uh, a little too enthusiastic about getting physical and about trying to simulate those reps, especially special teams, something you can't really you get those collision style plays. Uh, you know, running backs getting hit, ball security becomes an issue because that may not happen in practice. Uh, tackling, I mean, I, I think it's gonna be fascinating. You may get some of the just the fundamental things that suffer in some of these games because of the time off, and you never have that much time off during the season. You, you mentioned I want before we get going into the game and a little bit more about Texas in general, the young players uh, and yeah. what they're doing right now. You've been there where you didn't play a lot as a true freshman, and so you had this, these bowl practices that were essentially an extension of the season that gave you an extra two weeks of full on practice. Where frankly, sometimes you guys were the priority in those practices as the young players. Yes, they had the older players, but they were trying to just get reps to understand what they were supposed to do. Whereas the young players were actually the ones that were trading paint. You know what I mean? They were actually hitting each other. Explain like a guy, I, we, we talked about it, a Jelani McDonald, Darian Gallette, uh, Warren Roberson. What are those guys, those young guys right now? What are they doing? What are they focused on? What, is it, what are they seeing for really the first time? Uh, yeah, that's you know I, I I love that because I do remember getting some of those live reps late in the season. Coaches, you know, they're all about managing practice and trying to get the most right, maximize those practice reps. Well, late in the season, when you do have this extra time to practice, they're also looking at the the way the team is going to you know transform after this bowl game, right? It's a lot of guys leaving. That's It's almost, you know, this, this moment where, where a metamorphosis for the team. Uh, they're in this point where, yeah, the, the older guys, they're going to go win this bowl game, put their stamp on it. But a lot of those guys are leaving, and it's going to be the young guys who take over and going to be competing for those spots. So I think for coaches, it's kind of an, an overall evaluation for those young guys. I felt that uh, as a young guy, uh, in the, before those bowl games, I think it was the Cotton Bowl. I only played, it was Cotton Bowl and a Holiday Bowl for me. Y'all, y'all remember them days. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all remember? Like, oh, man, damn Cotton Bowl on the Holiday Bowl. It was going every year. I played in two Cotton Bowls and two Holiday Bowls. That's the way it went down. Holiday Bowl is a quality bowl, though, I'll tell you, man. Hanging out in San Diego ain't bad at all. Uh, but, yeah, I, I remember early on 
there there was i mean like a like a you know a few days of those practices where man i was like oh i felt like i felt like a starter as a young guy you know getting a lot of reps out there and i think it's because the coaches were trying to evaluate for the future um and it's not just and the coaches are juggling a lot of different things we talked about this we're, we're recruiting in a transfer board with practice for bowl games that's your job as a coach multitasking and you better be really damn good at it. you got a lot of coaches to help you with it but i do think one of the priorities for the coaches in the bowl games is let's get a look at the let's get a jump let's get a little uh you know let's get a little bit of a preview of what the team may look like going forward with some of these young guys who are not our frontline starters but we know are going to be competing for depth but also maybe competing for breakthroughs uh, to actually take some of these starting jobs. So it, it's, it's as a coach, I mean, I think it's all, it'd be irresponsible of you not to do it. I think every, I, I, I believe so, at least my experience at Texas, that is always the case. I think that's the case all around the country for these young guys. I mean, they're looking to get a jump. You said it. Yeah. If anything, anything that gives them an edge for whenever they're next. I mean, Sark's not looking to go any place. So he's certainly trying to get a head start on spring ball, if not yeah. further along than that. Uh, one of the young guys we've heard is is performed very well. By the way, is Arch Manning, um, and I mean that's got to be music to to Texas fans' ears because if Quinn Ewers comes back, Arch Manning uh, returns as well for another year of seasoning before he takes the helm. Uh, Texas is just in such a great position at the most important position on the football field. All right, before we go in, we have some. I have some other questions. I want to say thank you to our sponsor, uh, the State of the Program, brought to you by Adam Lowy. And the Lowy Law Firm, he's been helping injured Texans uh, for decades. Give him a call, 512-280-0800, or visit him at LowyLawFirm.com. If you've been injured in a car wreck or on the job and just even think you might be due some compensation, give Adam and his group a call. They do a free consultation, no strings attached. That's 512-280-0800. Rod, I, I think about it, and I've talked to you, and you've been on top of this from the get-go. We spoke to Alex Okafor last week, talked to Sed Griffin, somebody that followed you, right? And that what we talked about was following up classes yeah, with class upon class of recruiting. And we just passed in recruiting, and I, you've gone into this before, and we've talked about it. it it's that idea of – Iron sharpens iron, or, or what Cedric Griffin said, comp- competition creates, breeds excellence. Mm-hmm. Is, is that mm-hmm. what, I mean, everybody from you to Cedric Griffin, Alex, a bunch of other guys, Bob Shipley, if, if, you and him are even talking. Texas right now is continuing to add more and more talent, right? Not just good talent, but high-end stuff, high-end talent. Yeah. yeah. You look, you take a step back as a guy that knows football as well as you do um, and has seen it, right? I mean, you've seen that progression on a personal level because you've not only played at Texas, then you worked a little bit on the sideline. You saw that happen. How important and how valuable is that process that we're seeing happen right in front of our, our right in front of our eyes right now? Yeah, I, I think it's the key to development honestly it's I, and the coaches are a big part of it you know but the coaches are teaching their techniques fundamentals i mean they're teachers all right we're in the classroom and we're learning about the game and we become students of the game um but man there's nothing i think that helps development at least help my development like being pushed by playing with great players in that db room and looking at guys like nathan basher <laughs> uh, Quentin Jammer, talking about the Young Bucks, bringing in a Cedric Griffin, bringing in a, a Michael Huff, bringing in – I mean, it 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 pushed me to be the best player I could be because the truth is if I won that starting job amongst those great players, I mean, I had to be a great player. I, I, I had to take my game to the, 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 the most elite level possible. And honestly, I, I did it for three years as a starter. There ain't no way I could have done it in that room without being pushed by great competition. Um, but also on the other side, when they brought in Roy Williams, Sloan Thomas, and BJ Johnson, I, I used to take reps against Kwame Cavill. That was that's my dog. I love me some Kwame Cavill, man. He he took me aside as a young buck and made me cover him one on one after practice, <laughs> and kind of you know taught me a lot of the technique and the tricks of the trade. Um, but when you brought in a, a just a group of stellar receivers who were projected to be NFL caliber receivers. And I was playing alongside defensive backs. 
who are NFL caliber DBs and even the young guys who are pushing me. And I knew the young, young bucks had higher upside than me. I knew I mean, I'm five, five, nine, not 175. I can cover that's my, that's my elite trait and skill. But Hey man, I looked at Huff. I'm a, I'm a football investigator and evaluator too. I looked at Huff daddy and went, yep. Yeah. Higher upside. I got <laughs> Cedric Griffin, long rangey. Have y'all seen this dude, man? He's built like an avatar. <laughs> like, like, you know, higher upside than Rod B. All right. But I got to, and even that, and my man Nasty Nate, Nathan Vasher came in. It was just, I've never played with a better ball hawk than Nathan Vasher. Um, all those guys were great. And I knew they had high upside to me. I was a realist. Come on, man. I, you know, but that didn't mean they were gonna take my job. <laughs> that was that was my job. Y'all can have it and you can go to new heights and you can push the standard when I'm gone, but this is my job. And that's, that's the mindset you got to have. And if I didn't have that, and that means I had to stay later than all my, and trust me, I remember Nat, my man, Nathan Vash was like, Hey man, I'm staying late with you. I'm staying after practice with you. That's the standard. I had to, we had to set the standard because the only way I was going to be able to beat them out in competition was if Rodby stayed later, had to watch more film. That's why I can do what I do now. Hell, I watched so much damn film, man. <laughs> like I, 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 in my, I remember in just the dormitory, for hours at a time. I was sweet mates with my man Sims. I mean, I was sweet mates with my man Kenny Hyder at one time, and I remember watching film hours at a time on opponents and doing my own analytics before it was even a thing. And I had to do it. And I, I remember inviting my teammates over, like, "Hey, man, let's go. Let's watch some film together. Let's let's break it down." I had to not only push myself to be better than the best, I, what ended up being the best DBs in the country <laughs> later on in their careers, but I also, I had to kind of set the standard and it pushed me to be a leader of that group. I, if, if I had decided, you know, I'm going to win this job and I'm going to do it in a selfish manner, like, Hey man, I don't care about my teammates. Then we wouldn't have been a great, defensive back room not only did i have to win the job but i gotta pull the young dbs with me so when i stay after practice late they stay after practice late and every the culture and the standard is set that in order to win a job in that room this is kind of how the running back room is now to win a job in that room it takes what it takes it takes what it takes and then the standard never falls off because the young bucks learn that too Nasty Nate passes down to Huff Daddy and Cedric Griffin. They pass it down to the next group and the next Michael Griffin. You know, it just boom. That's how the DB room became the best DB room in the country for years after that. But it 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 took like that that spark initially for I think of, of having that much. I mean, we had how many Thorpe Award winners in that damn room? We had two Huff Daddy and A Ross. We had mm -hmm. two Thorpe Award winners in the same room. That didn't include Quentin Jammer, who's a first round pick. That didn't include Cedric Griffin, who's a second round pick. I mean, it was loaded with talent. That's what you're talking about doing right now with Star. You're talking about just loading it up with room, and then you can let the chips fall where they may. Then the the cream will rise to the top. And I wasn't necessarily the cream, but it pushed me to be the best player I could be. I it, it just brought out the best player in me. And that's not even to mention going against Roy Williams and B.J. Johnson, Sloan Thomas today. I just felt the pressure of trying to win a job in that room every day to be my best. And if I wasn't and I had a bad day or fell off, I could feel the pressure <laughs> of the young bucks and they're watching them perform and having to understand that I had to actually be consistently great every day or I could lose my job. And honestly, I wouldn't have blamed them. I, I watched guys lose their job. I watched guys, I watched my man Amar Brooks lose his job at corner and then get another job at safety. That's respect. He was like, all right, then what I can't play a corner because Rod B, Quentin Jammer at corner, and they're bringing in more corners. You know what? I think I can get a job at safety. All right. And the DB room was open. It was open to competition like that. If you could earn the spot. And that's what I that's what I loved about it. I think Sark's trying to create that type of mentality within the team. You, you mentioned two things that I want to go. You talked about a spark to get it going, right? That's one of yeah. the terms you used. I think that, that that's what we've seen is a spark, right? Whether it's Jade Barron in, in the secondary, right? Mm -hmm. A guy that to your point is a film nut kind of, you know, high, high IQ uh, football player, a Jalen Ford that's developed so much at linebacker and now is, taking Anthony Hill under his wing a little bit. Uh, you talk about the offensive line. Um, just 
Quinn Ewers and Arch Manning. We, you mentioned yeah. the running backs. Um, now you have three young receivers like Jonte Cook, uh, Ryan Niblett, DeAndre Moore under underneath Mitchell, uh, Worthy, and Whittington. They're they're seeing good habits. Yep. And I think Sark has in, installed the spark. They've created the spark. Well, now it's about what do they do on top of it. The other the other thing I, I mentioned or I thought about as you're talking about, I always thought it would be I, – I, I shouldn't say I always thought it would be – I felt like it meant, mattered more who you were competing against at cornerback. But you brought something separate into the equation, and that's who you're competing against in reps. So it, it's when, when it's Colin Simmons versus Kelvin Banks mm -hmm. or, I don't know, Ethan Burke versus Trevor Goosby, right? I, yeah. They're seeing what it takes – at a high level against one another right now. Yeah. And I think that that's infinitely, I, I hadn't really thought about it that way, but it helps, it helps push them at nearly every position when you add elite players at each position, because look, if you're Jake majors and you have to worry about Tavondre sweat over the top of the ball or yes. Byron Murphy over the top of the ball, you're going to get better. You're going to be ready for somebody as quick as a cat. Or you're going to be ready for a 360 pound monster. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you're exactly right. Jay I Major mean, wants, he, he hadn't seen, there won't be a better player in the country he sees at that position than Tavondre Sweat. And I felt like they're going to be just Roy Williams. And I loved when I got to the point as a senior where I can, I can demand in one on one. Now I'm going up against Roy, DJ, or Sloan. That's it. That's it. That, that's sorry, guys. I, I can't waste any reps. I need reps. I want reps against the guys who are considered elite receivers. So when I went to the game, there was confidence. I wasn't going to play up against a better receiver or go up against a better receiver than Roy Williams. This wasn't, I mean, maybe, maybe once a game, maybe one game out of the year in the bowl game, potentially, maybe if Oklahoma had that guy, maybe if it was a Rashawn Woods back in the day, remember that guy for Oklahoma State, eh, maybe once. And I don't think those guys are even better than Roy, in my opinion. I think Roy was better than all those guys that I played up against. Um, I, the confidence that I had, if I had those quality reps against Roy, oh, man, I it, my confidence soared. And I had to, listen, to guard Roy Williams, my technique had to be flawless. It had, He was a freak of nature. I had to have great leverage. I had to make sure that I my fundamentals were on point, that I was patient, that I didn't, you know, uh, you know uh, shoot with the wrong hand. I had to make sure all those things were on point. Otherwise, Roy Williams would make me look bad out there. And I have to watch that one on one rep in, in the film room with Coach Akina, and he's going to break it down in front of me. But I, I, need, I know I needed that challenge if I was going to be the best cornerback possible, the best version of myself. And I, I was. And Matt Brown brought it out. And it was, it was, it was Coach Akina was a big part of it. Best DB coach, I think. It was kind of a three, it was a three part kind of developmental, if you will, kind of process. I had to be pushed by the best young DBs, I potentially, you know, that they could acquire. Um, I had to go up against some of the best wide receivers in the country. They provided that. And then I had to have the best, um, best, basically the best DB teacher, all right, the best defensive back coach available to help me learn how to be a student of the game and learn how to win the chess match within the game. And that was Coach Aquino. So honestly, if not for either of those components, I'm not sure if I get drafted into the NFL I'm not sure if I'd be right now able to break down ball in, in the manner that I can, um, because I got that from Coach Aquino. The, the 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 mental side of it, the football acumen, the football IQ that came from the coach. The 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 uh, the the technique and I think the flawless technique and the, being fundamentally sound sound and assignment sound. I think that came from going up against the best in practice all the time, and I just think the the spirit of competition. And just the work ethic that you have to cultivate when you you see next to you Nathan Basher, <laughs> who's but all time interceptions leader, are tied with Noble Dawson. So you see a Huff Daddy and a Cedric Griffin and a Quentin Jammer in the same room, and you think to yourself, "If I'm gonna win one of them spots, I gotta put in the work. I gotta put in more work than all those guys." And then it fosters that 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 competitive sickness where all you want to do is. All you want to do is grind and work 
the process. You're obsessed with the process. You're obsessed with it. And the product takes care of itself when you become obsessed with the process. Good stuff, Rod. Really appreciate it. I, I think my point is, I think Texas is moving in that direction in a lot of ways because they're starting to have the talent, the younger talent that yeah. pushes those guys, right? That yep. pushes the envelope a little bit. And, and I, I just think it's uh, great to see because, you know, I don't know what he- Texas, what the SEC necessarily has in store for Texas. Hmm. But I know the competition level is going to be amped. Yep. You know, to whatever level it's going to be. And so to meet Georgia in Austin next year, you're going to see what it really looks like, right? I know they're in the college football playoff right now, but you get my point. It's like they're going to have to come to play each and every week a little bit differently than maybe they did in the Big 12. And that's going to be that competitive process over and over and over again. You've seen teams that are infinitely – are not eminently um, uh, talented like A and M. Yeah, squander that because whatever reason that culture that spark never got started. The yeah. the culture of competition never mm-hmm. got going, and I, I think that's that's important. All right, I want to I want to say thanks to our sponsor one last time, and I have a couple more questions uh, that I want to ask you and discuss. Uh, Adam Lowy, Lowy Law Firm, helping injured Texans for a couple of decades. If you've been injured in a car wreck or on the job and feel you might be due compensation or want to seek legal advice, Adam and his group give a free consultation. No, no dollars, no signing paperwork, signing anything away. Give them a call, 512-280-0800, or visit them at LoweyLawFirm.com. Adam, thank you for your sponsorship in uh, 2023. We, we really, really appreciate it. All right. I want to take this and and move to a different piece of thought process. Five days away from from the game right now, you have any advice to this team, any advice to to certain players that that you want to see do well or you know be 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 what it may. Your 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 words. What do you have any advice for people or for the for the players? Uh oh man, that's good. Yeah, I mean I I think for the players, I just think they should um, should have a, a lot of confidence. I mean, th- that the beauty of this, this these four teams and this college football playoff, and I've been looking at the matchups, looking at the teams, and you can make a great case for almost any team to win it all. You really could. I mean, you can make I can make a case for a great case for Texas. I can make a great case for Washington. I can make a great case for Bama or Michigan. Um, I don't know if there is a team right now, and maybe it's Bama. I, I I make the argument that's playing better football right now than Texas. Like their last two games, uh, you, they played their best football. Guys, you cannot ask for a better scenario where you are building to a a crescendo. You are you are peaking. We talked. I talked about this with Coach Shipley actually. Um, you know, and there, listen, I'm not saying that Washington's Washington's playing great football. They're undefeated. Um, but watching this Texas football team right now in that Tech game and in the Oklahoma State game, I do consider the competition, of course. I don't necessarily think Tech or Oklahoma State are great teams. Um, but I hadn't seen Texas play a more well-rounded, overall, comprehensive, four, full four-quarter game. And we, we discussed this. This is one of the topics we talked about all season long. Man, I don't know if Texas is going to play a full fourth quarter game. They're a fourth quarter team, but not a four quarter team. And Tech and Oklahoma State, they that's as close as we've seen to them playing a full four quarter game and closing out an opponent. And I, I talked about this with Anthony Hill, and he talked about how they want to make teams submit. Right? That's what they want to do. Now, they're not going to make Washington submit. Washington's a damn good team. But just the attitude of once you are starting to impose your will on an opponent, don't let up. And they did that early in the season, right? They were, they were letting up. They were relaxing. I was like, what, what are you relaxing for? You obviously are better than this team. You're good enough. Or I would say you are better than them to the point where you can be up 21 or 20 points. All right. You're that much better than them. Then you should be able to close them out. Then that shouldn't become a, a game that comes down to the last minute drive. Right. You were able to impose your will to that extent. And I think they that, that's a maturity factor that they, they they were aware of that. They were aware, man, we got to start closing out these opponents. That was something that they were talking about. They were discussing as a team. 
and then they wanted to they wanted to remedy that. We've seen them do this as a team, and I think that's a that's a that's a cultural. Um, I think that's a, that's kind of a, a cultural um, awakening, like it's a, a cultural moment for them when they can uh, they can realize. Because I, I heard uh, JT Sanders talk about this before the season. He said we he said this, and I'm paraphrasing. We know uh, that our reputation is that we can't finish, that we can't close out a team, that we don't finish games. And they want to make that a point of emphasis to finish games in the fourth quarter. Even Sark talked about making the practice, structuring the practices so that they can close out opponents a little bit better. Um, and I just, I love that the fact this team, they were, they were a flawed team to start the season. I'm not saying they fixed all that, but man, they have improved. Like talk about red zone offense. They were five or five versus Oklahoma State. Like, I think this team may be playing their best football. Well, that's, is that enough to win it all? I think so. I, I'm actually I'm confident that if they're playing their that football that we watch versus Oklahoma State and versus Tech, I I think they're going to win it all. Now, that could be an aberration. That could just be, you know, they play two really good games and they play they played one game with even five or five in the red zone. And we're not going to see that team in, in the that was an outlier. We're not going to see that team in the bowl game. That could easily be the case. But if it's not and they're trending and peaking, they're going to win it all. They are. Uh, just, that's the way I feel. That because they're, they're gonna be five. They're gonna be five or five in the red zone, Bobby. This team—that's one of the only things that was stopping this team from being great was they red zone offense was just bad, subpar. If they're gonna do that, I don't really know if I really. I, I know without Jonathan Brooks, that's crazy to say, but it feels like that they're trending the right way. Yeah. Well, here, here's what I took from there. You talked about progression, maturity. Those are all things that come when, when you're talented like Texas is, especially young talent, like like an Anthony Hill. You mentioned him or Quinn Ewers even or C.J. Baxter. Yes. I mean, they're young. Manny Muhammad is young. I mean, you, you have these guys, Ethan Burke. I, you know, I, I feel like that progression, that maturity takes place and they're learning. You have to learn how to be dominant. It just doesn't come to you. You have to sure. work through that process. Now, some people say, oh, well, we beat this team 70 to nothing in high school. That's true. But, you know, you probably didn't go out and lose 70 to nothing the next time. You probably had a, a good team and your coach taught you how to be that or the expectations were there beforehand. Well, you look at Steve Sarkeesian, he didn't have that expectation. Tom Herman played more one score games than I think everybody in the history of the University of Texas. Yeah. In the first three. I mean, I mean, it's just like he did. He played he played everything close. So the, there was never that dominant performance. It, it wasn't I don't want to say it was beaten out of him. Maybe they weren't. Maybe they didn't have that capacity. But it's been this this ongoing improvement that has guided it and allowed it to become where, to your point, Texas Tech and Oklahoma State literally had no chance. No chance. Neither of them. Neither of them. And now that doesn't mean that's going to happen against Washington. No. Right? Different different caliber opponent. They have different uh, pieces of the puzzle, puzzle themselves. But I, what I – we don't go back enough. We talk about it in big uh, – in metaphors and, you know, kind of big big words and uh, this, mm -hmm. this uh, transformation that's taking place. But we don't necessarily appreciate it for what it is because it takes time. Yep. You know, it, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, yes, you can be a better team over time, over overnight, but you can't necessarily get this consistent upheaval like what we're seeing and, and change in process. I, I just think that's been a, been a big one. All right, uh, Rod, that's going to do it for today's state of the program. Uh, you, me, Coach Shipley, hopefully get together this weekend. We're going to talk about our picks for the game. I'm excited about that. You've got uh, talking ball later today with CJ. You've got, uh, Coach Shipley for Football Theory. It's going to be a full full uh, workload for you this week. Um, I'm headed to New Orleans tomorrow, uh, so I'm ready to get nice. down there and get going. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, so that'll do it for today. Thanks to Adam Lowy again in the Lowy Law Firm. Rod, thank you for sharing your time with us as well. Yeah. Uh, for Rod Babers, I'm Bobby Burton. That's been State of the Program on Texas Football. Hook them. Hook them.